Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the second tutorial on how to create a realistic eyeball. In the last tutorial, we covered how to model and do a basic texture of the eyeball. So make sure you take a look at that. Today, we're going to go into creating a realistic eyeball. So that means that we're going to add some nice textures for the iris and also the cornea itself. This is what it looks like right now, which is okay, but we really want to make sure that we capture the realism of it, which includes veins and the beautiful details of the iris. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is grab my iris here and I need to make sure that it's UV mapped. Up here at the top we have a um, isolate select so click on that and I'm going to take a look at my UVs and right now or it's not going to work because the UVs are really stretched out and well we need to definitely UV map this. So let's go to UVs planar mapping options. I'm going to press F to focus and if you're not sure which way to project, just take a look at the way this is facing versus what's over here at the bottom left of the manipulator. And I can see that it's an X. So I'm going to select X, make sure keep image with height ratio is on and then project. Let's take a look at the UVs again. I am going to maybe scale it down just a little bit because I feel like it's a little close to the edges, but this should give me enough information to be able to texture the iris. All right, let's go ahead and export this. Let's go to image a UV snapshot. I'm going to click on browse and I'm going to go to my images. So if you set your project, you can always click on the images folder here. And this is going to be my iris UV snap. TIFF is fine. 1024 is great. Apply and close. Now you may be wondering why I'm choosing a 1024 map versus something smaller. After all, this is just uh, the iris and uh, we probably don't need that much texture information, but the reality is that we might. Uh, if we zoom in into a character's face, the eyes are one of the main things people focus on. So you need to make sure you have some really nice quality textures, at least for the eyes. In Photoshop, this is my UV snap. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. And this one's gonna be black. And this is my UV snap. And I also want to make sure I, uh, I lock it because sometimes I paint on this and that's a bad idea. And layer one is going to be BG, which stands for background. Okay, so how are we going to texture this? Well, my recommendation would be you want to use a reference image like this where basically the whole eye is revealed. And it's also very high quality. So you can see that I'm zoomed out about 66.67. So if I go to 100%, this is a pretty big image, which is great. So I'm going to grab an elliptical tool and I'm going to make a selection. Now, if you want to, you can start at the middle and if you click on shift alt, you can drag this marquee. Whoops. Where did it go? Let me zoom out. <laughs> Let me try that again. All right. Make a selection without letting go. Shift alt and you can make a selection based on the center. And of course, you can always move things around before you copy it. So I'm about to grab this. I'm going to do a control C, which is copy control V. And there we go. Control T to expand. And my goal is to get this texture to fit right in here. We want to make sure that everything in the eyeball is in fact inside the UV. So this area is going to be black, so I can't have that. So what I'm going to do is use the liquify. So let's go to filter up here at the top. It's called liquify. And then um, I can kind of nudge things around a little bit. Now it would be helpful to see the UV. And if I turn on show backdrop, I can see my UVs, which is gonna be helpful because I'm gonna click and drag this and just kind of move this texture into the space. Now you can do this with any eye texture. You can even take a picture of your own eye. Just make sure that you have as little highlight information in your uh, eye as possible. So for example, you can see that I have a little bit of highlight, which I'm gonna have to fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and nudge these up a little bit. Make sure that the eye is looking good here. Just using a nice liquify tool. It's a fancy little tool. And what's great about using a real eye is that, well, it's real. So uh, you get a nice uh, realistic things like a little off color. So it's not all blue. You can see that there's a little bit of yellow and things like that. So it's what makes eyes so beautiful. Click okay when you're done. And there we go. I'm gonna hide this. You can see how it looks. Now we need to get rid of the highlights. We definitely don't want any highlight or sometimes when there's pictures, you see the eyelashes, you, you probably wanna paint those out. Now I'm gonna use the 
spot healing brush and just go ahead and kind of remove those little flaws that I see here that, that were captured. Okay, just because I liked things clean, what I'm going to do next is grab the magic wand and select the empty space out here. Then go to select, modify, uh, contract by uh, 10 pixels, create a new layer, and I'm going to fill it with a 50% gray. So this is zero, zero, hue, saturation, black is 50. And then shift, backspace, foreground color is selected. By the way, if you do a shift backspace, it does in fact have a 50% gray, so you can choose that as well. And there we go. This is a nice clean texture. I'm going to call this my border. I'm going to file save as. It's always good to have a working file. So this is going to be my iris CLR. It stands for color. And then I like to preview it. So in Maya, I have this color. So let's open up the attributes and I'm going to delete the history and all that stuff. Go to the iris, go to color, click on the little output, go to file, click on the little folder, and you'll notice that it's looking for it in source images. I will reconnect it. Right now I'm just doing a preview. So let me go into images and I'm going to grab the color. So there we go. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to make a snapshot of this. This is what we started with. And I'm going to hit play and see what it looks like with this new shader. First tick, click on this. Going to press three on this so it's a smooth preview. Let me get another angle like this and then render. So you can already tell that the texture is looking way nicer than what we had before. This beautiful blue eyes. This is nice for maybe something basic, but now we have some really nice textures, but we can definitely push this a little bit further. And I just want to double check to make sure nothing's weird on the edges. Looks like I'm okay. So since that I considered this texture final, file save as. I am going to go to my source images and this is my iris color. And if you're going into games, I'd probably rec recommend that you choose Targa, but I am going to be using TIFF. Um, make sure that no layers is selected and click save. My, my compression is none. Click OK. Double check to make sure there's no channels. And now I have a new a uh, texture in my source images. So I am going to reconnect it just because I do want to make sure that this is connected into the right texture, which is the Iris CLR. Back into Photoshop, we are going to need a bump map. So let's go ahead and convert this into a grayscale. So over here we have hue and saturation. Let's go ahead and desaturate it. Probably going to, because I like the bumpiness of this, we can keep it as is. So again, I'm going to file save as. It's an images, double check. And I'm going to call this my BMP, which stands for bump. So again, it's a working file. And let's take a look at it in Maya. Again, I'm just working on my file. So I've got my iris shader. I'm going to go into my geometry. Let's go to bump map. Click on the little output. Let's go to file. We got a bump value. Click on that little connection. Go to that little folder. Again, we're just testing it out. So let's go ahead into images. And here's my bump. So you can even see in the preview that it's already done something cool. Uh, let me take a snapshot of this and let's see what it looks like now. Cool. I like the way it looks. It might be a little strong, but I do like the look of the bump map. So to calm that down, I can go back into Photoshop or I can use the 2D node. So over here, um, if I'm in my file, I can click this little guy right here, which is just a connection and it goes up the chain, which is placement node, file, bump 2D node, and then the shader. And let me reduce this to 50%, so 0.5. Again, I do want that texture. I just want to make sure that it's uh, it's not that, that bumpy. I like the way it looks. I'm going to take a snapshot just so we can compare. And you can see the difference. And now what I'm going to do is work on my specularity. Now we've added the specularity here. And I might decrease the roughness just a little bit more. But another thing that we can do is have a little fun and add a little bit more of this color into the specularity. So I'm going to use the hypershade. It's not necessary for me to create a new specularity map, even though I could. So what I'm going to do is grab the iris shader, click on this guy right here, and you can see the color map. So we have our bump map here. Let me just make this bigger so we can see this better. Press F to focus. So this is our iris shader. This is our color map. This is the bump map node. This is the bump node. And this is the bump map, which I need to change to uh, a TIFF. And what I'm going to do is just grab this little 
out color and drag it into the specular color. So that means that the specular is now connected with the color map. I also feel the butt map's a little strong, so I'm gonna go ahead and decrease this a little bit more to 0.25, just so I can kind of calm it down a little bit. And let me render it. All right, so this is what we have so far. I'm gonna take a snapshot. We started with this, went to this, now we have that, and you can see the specularity. And there we have it. We have just spent a little bit of quality time texturing the iris. So hopefully you found that helpful. Let me know uh, what you think by leaving a comment below. And of course, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below as well. And I wanted to thank you so much for spending the time with me to work on this tutorial. Having a realistic eye will really improve the personality of your character. So hopefully you found this helpful. It would be really amazing if you could share this video if you think it was helpful. And also if you know somebody that might find it helpful like your friends or your peers. And also please subscribe and like my video. Those type of things are direct messages from you to me that says that you really like these videos and that you wanna see more. So please feel free to like and subscribe. It really encourages me to make more. And if you have the time, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free videos, free ebooks, free downloads, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you again for watching. In the next video tutorial, we will be texturing the cornea, which involves veins. And we could hand paint all of them, but I'm going to show you a little trick, creating veins a lot faster. So I will see you in the next video tutorial when we finish texturing the eye. See you then.